question and I often consider it myself is that so if there's all these timelines are they eventually all going to somehow come to a similar point and is that point determined by our sort of mission here is it chosen by who we're being is who we're being also it's obviously part of you know uh, mission anyway but you know I have that question of like so is it is there this sort of ultimate destiny anyway that's a great question yes there is an ultimate destiny but no you don't necessarily uh create that so in Garnet Schulhauser's latest book, he actually asked me to write a review for it. You know, he's written, that's his fourth book. He, he goes and he watches someone doing a life plan. They plan their life. And as they're planning their life, they're looking back on what they've achieved in previous lives. And it's, we're looking at it from a linear perspective because that's the way we think. He writes it like a linear perspective. It kind of is a little bit different to that, but let's just, let's just play on that playing field because that's where we are so in this other life he had an intention to create something and you know the the intention is always to return to love with any life plan that's the intention i'm going to go down there i'm going to be you know maybe deformed or blind or my parents are going to fight or i'm going to be bashed up or raped or you know whatever we choose whatever like contrast we choose to experience we can say i'm going to have an easy life i'm going to have a hard life the intention is inside of all that, can I return to love? Can I remember who I am? As he, looked at his, um, as he looked at his past lives, he realized that he had an intention of that life and he didn't manage it because he, he came into a family of, he was a girl, sometimes a boy, sometimes of a very wealthy family in a few, time, in a few lifetimes. And he wanted to return back to his connection with his source and the money just got, he got swept away with the money and he was very ruthless and very mean to people. And so he didn't reach the ultimate goal because the egoic mind and the distraction of life and the thought forms that we play into just totally overwhelmed him. And so he was like choosing again from that perspective. So yeah, we come in with a plan. Yeah, absolutely, we come in with a plan. Whether we fulfill that plan or not is actually up to us. It's up to, it's up to us being deliberate in what we're choosing. But with every plan, the plan is to return to love. That, Like that, you know, whether we want to uh, experience fame or experience poverty or experience, um, you know, saving the planet or experience destroying the planet, you know, whatever we choose to experience, the plan is to remember who we are. Like can we, can we come into the veil of forgetfulness and can we not get deluded by the distraction here and can we remember who we are? So some people come in with more of a connection and more of a memory and some people don't. But as we're evolving as a human race, the game is getting easier. So it's been a hard, it's been hard because there's been a lot of negative belief and negative destruction. And, you know, we get swept up in thought forms. They're like super highways of thought forms, religious, society. You know, we in the West have one, we get married to one partner, we have one wife, you know, that's a thought form. And so in other countries, a man has several wives and they believe that's their truth. There is no truth. There is just an idea that we say is right or wrong and we get swept up in the rightness and the wrongness of it and we forget that we're all connected and we're all loved because we're so deluded by the rights and the wrongs that we think is who we are. So that's the game of life, you know. We come to forget and then to remember. And that's always the plan, no matter what we're choosing in our life, be it hard or easy. Sometimes people that choose really, really easy lives, they actually find it harder to remember because life's just too cushy. And the distraction of holidays and money and food and, you know, excitement and meeting famous people and staying in beautiful hotels and having... They just get so, I've actually got a lot of friends like that. I have a friend who was born into a very wealthy family, never needed to work. And he knows he's a light worker and he knows he's here to affect change. And he's so distracted by the comforts of life. He's just having too much fun, you know, that sometimes. Doesn't mean, yeah, doesn't, it doesn't mean as much, if you, you know. I was at a dinner party with him recently and he found it really hard to sit with me. And he actually, he got up and left like really suddenly. And I asked my guides what was going on and they said, 
that I am an activator for lightworkers and new world teachers. And so when people sit in my presence and they're really not fulfilling their plan, they feel that agitation, like they sort of like beat up on themselves, like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's what he felt. It was really interesting. And he just said, i got to go. And he sort of left. I love him. I grew up with him, right? He's a good friend, but uh, he is here to affect change. And he does it in his own way. He heads a lot of charities and stuff like that, but he knows he can do a lot more. And that's that agitation within him that I should be doing more, I should be doing more. But let me just go and spend a weekend in Paris and I should be doing more, I should be, oh, let me just go away with my friends to the country. And, you know, there's just too much life to experience. It's too much fun. But ultimately, when we do, when we are on our life plan, when we are fulfilling what we came to do, and that is returning to love, it's just, the most exhilarating, best feeling we can have because we're in alignment with our soul plan, our ego mind and our subconscious are all in alignment. And when we're in alignment, life just flows effortlessly and we're just exhilarated and excited and life is just this joyous bliss because we're in alignment. But when we're out of alignment, we feel that agitation like, like there's something not right, like there's something I need to be doing that's just not right because we're just sort of out of alignment with what we came to do. But that agitation is our emotional guidance system showing us something, you know, like it's showing us what we just, you're like you said you'd do that. Like I had a shop years ago when I was 30. I opened up a furniture and homeware shop and I loved it because I love pretty things. If you see my house, right, it's full of pretty things. I love it. And the whole time I had the shop, it was very, it was successful in that it, people loved it. I wasn't making a lot of money because I had a lot of um, like not worthiness issues going on at the time. So I was paying my staff all the money and I wasn't paying myself a wage. But anyway, people loved the shop. But the whole time I had the shop, I kept feeling like I was not, I was, it was wrong. It was just wrong. People would say, who, who, what do you do? And I'd say, I have a shop. I'm a shop owner. Uh, I have a homeware and every time it flew out of my mouth, it just wasn't who I am and I didn't understand what was going on at the time. Now, in hindsight, I understand it. As much as I was playing with my passions and my creativity and I was enjoying myself, I wasn't in alignment with my soul plan. You know, this is what I came to do. I came to teach deliberate creation. I've got this whole mob that's talking to me. And they, they say to me all the time, get out there and do some more teaching. Get out there and do some more teaching. Like they've been saying that to me for years. And I'm going, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, yeah, when you're, when, you're on your, um, when you're in alignment with your soul plan, effort, manifestation's effortless. As a young girl, I was like looking around life thinking, what do I want to be, a fashion designer? I want to be an artist. I want to be a singer. I want to be an actor. I want to be all these delicious things. And when... Someone gave me a um, massage course. It put me on my path towards discovering who we are as healers. I did a naturopathic course. And I found that all the times I tried to get into magazines and work for fashion magazines or get into the movie industry or do all this stuff that I thought was delicious and fun, the doors were not really opening. As soon as I started to do a naturopathic course, they just flew open. Like I was just like, wow, this is easy. Again, I was on that trajectory of my life plan. So I was discovering who I am as, you know, like I, in naturopathy, we do, talked about diet and symptomatology and, you know, all that stuff, like who I am as a human being, what health. And it just five years full-time study of naturopathy and I left with more questions than I started with. <laughs> so sort of, you know, who are we as spiritual beings? What are we doing here? What's possible? How do I create my reality? None of those were answered inside a five-year full-time, five-day-a-week naturopathic course, right? So these were the questions I had and these are the questions that I answer for people because they're the questions that I have. So I was just telling Jack what I want to do for the Inner Sanctum this year is I've spoken because I really love teaching but I love teaching through others too. I've spoken to so many amazing beings on the show and I'm going to invite some of them to come and join us and, um, and you can answer ask them questions as well. Garnet Schulhauser is just one of my favorite. I spoke to him about that last year. He was taken out of his body. He was a corporate lawyer for 40 years. Homeless man stops him in the street and says, why are you here and wakes him up? I don't know if you've probably seen the interviews I've done with him. I've done two now. 
and I'll be doing a third one soon because his fourth book has come out. But he is a fascinating guy. His spirit guide flies him around the universe, the cosmos, around planet Earth. He's spoken to some amazing beings that have been mythological beings and spoken to a lot of dead people on the other side. He actually speaks to the king in the latest book, you know, um, um, what's his name? Elvis is one of the people he has a chat with. And, yeah, so he's going to come on. And also the last person I spoke to had a near-death experience. She's a uh, physician's assistant in a busy ER, in an emergency room in a hospital in the States. She had a um, near-death experience and her guy said to her, you got to wake people up, girl. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to get Krista Gorman to come on. So that's what we've got planned for the Inner Sanctum this year. We've got a whole lot of guests I'm going to invite on that you can ask questions as well because the thing about watching my shows, it's great, but you can't ask them questions. So in the Inner Sanctum, you'll get the opportunity to ask them questions because I've learned so much from them. I've got this team, like I call them the Council of Light, who talk to me all the time. They never stop yapping. They just yap, yap, yap. But at the same time, you know, these people have answered so many other questions that maybe I didn't have that have just expanded my understanding and awareness. And as we expand our understanding and awareness, you know, we get clarity about how that works. It shows up in our life. I was just going to tell you a little story about Byron Bay. You know, I was, um, I was at a cafe at lunchtime ordering something for lunch. And the girl, I ordered, that's right, I ordered two chai teas and a couple of little biscuits and she charged me 20 bucks. And I said, I think you've overcharged me. And she's like standing there, they're a bit spaced out up there. And she goes, what? And I said, well, how much is this? Oh, that's $4, that's $5, that's $4.50, that's 4 I said, that doesn't add up to $20. You've charged me $19.50. I think you've overcharged me. She's like, what? And I just thought, oh, too hard. Keep the $2, right? I just, it's just too hard. So I was obsessing over the $2 and thinking, I should have got my $2. I said, it's so expensive here in Byron Bay. Everything's so overrated because it's a tourist town, right? And... Um, and then my guides are going, get over the $2. Like, just get over it, get over it. So I said out loud, I was sitting with a friend, I've got to get over the $2. i just got to get over that $2. Just let it go. It's $2, let it go. We had a laugh about it. That lunchtime that day, I go to the same shop. I realise that as a part of the conference, we get 10% discount. I'm going to like, I'm going to get my 10% discount this time, right? Before I even enter the shop, a girl comes running up to me who's sitting in one of the seats outside, chairs outside, and says, oh, look, I've just bought this salad. I've just bought this salad and I didn't want it. Can, I, can you please have it? Can you please have it? It's a really lovely salad. It's got pesto and this, 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 this. And I said, oh, yeah, I'd love it. Let me give you some money. No, no, don't give me any money. <laughs> so literally when I got over the $2, right, I was given lunch. <laughs> I mean, that's how quick manifestation can happen. When we get over our petty, you know, that petty little voice that obsesses over $2 or, you know, that petty voice inside us, when we just drop that, just we just open doors to manifestation that is just so beautiful. Someone literally gives me lunch and I, it was a stranger that did that. So a stranger rode with me for 12 hours and chatted with me in the car and we, we fell in love and... Um, and a stranger gave me a beautiful house to stay in. And a stranger gave me like, I mean, it, it, you can create magic. You absolutely can create magic and you're powerful. And so we need your magic. You know, the world needs your magic. The, the world needs you to get over your $2. <laughs> Those petty grievances. Let it go, let it go, let it go. It's not important. And when you do, magic happens.